it is your Lord and Master, Soaring Moon here, with another Trove Guide. This one is going to be a Building Guide. Very simple. Building Guide. I'm going to teach you how to place blocks really fast, and how to fill in areas with, with speed, how to place blocks in a... that was a very bad black spot. I thought it was going to crash there for a minute. Um, how to place blocks in, in strange patterns um, efficiently if you want to take care of that and some limitations of the building mechanics in Trove. So let's get right into that. I want to go into the red pearl portal into my club world and grab out some white blocks So I have the zone restrict turned off entirely. So we need to take care of that. Actually, I know it's valid here. Don't have to worry about that. Again, my microphone is over my keyboard, so it's a little irritating. Sure, there's no other invalid areas. Okay. So here is just a, a wall I made. There's no particular reason other than storing white blocks. But these walls here you'll see are a doozy. They go straight up to the sea of deep regret. So they're quite high walls. They're 200 blocks long. And they were a pain to place. I did that two years ago, or three years ago now. And you don't want to go and do that, right? That would be a pain. In order to prevent that from being a problem, we're going to have to turn zone restrict. Zone restrict expert. All right. So. You click and drag. So I'm clicking, dragging. And so you place your blocks 20 long. It's as far as you can go. It's 20 blocks long. So whenever you're placing blocks, you'll want to go up as far as you can while holding. So if you want to, to back out of this, you can either so you pressing tab places the block. If you're in the hold mode, if you right click, it will place a block. If you're in hold mode and you open your inventory, it'll still be on hold mode. When you close your inventory, you'll be locked in this. I'm not holding down any buttons. So whenever you, this is a bug in Trove. So I am currently holding no buttons. I'm only pressing forward. My hand's off the off of the mouse. So whenever I change build modes, you'll see that the block goes away. So if I hold down, change build modes, I'll place the block. Got me so far. If I hold build mode down and I open my inventory and then press tab, it'll it'll place a block. But if you hold build mode, open your inventory, release your mouse, and then move, and then exit build mode, <laughs> it see see that's it's just so buggy, right? So you can't cancel out of a of a build mode block after you've after you've entered build mode. See, right now I'm in I'm in build mode. So what you want to do? is if you're holding down a block placement, make it invalid by holding it over yourself and it'll turn it off. So hold it over yourself, that'll turn it off, and then it'll prevent the placement of the blocks. But in order to place quickly, jump up, get to the height, so this is 20 blocks high, release, hold, and then fall. So 
and do that in two strokes. Up to the top, fall. Up to the top, fall. You're going to miss some of these occasionally, just fill them in. And then rinse, repeat. So up, down, up, down. Gravity is way faster than you are. So just let it do, do the work and repeat that placement back and forth. Do not do this. This is about 40% slower. Actually, you know what? It's probably way, way, way slower. But well, it's probably a lot slower than that, than what I was doing. No, that is way slower than going and just doing this back and forth and fixing your mistakes later. No problem. Lots of walls really quickly. So that's one. If you're going to fill in anything that's more than six blocks high. So you'll see that you can reach one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's quite it's a little stretch in it. But as you go down, it gets below your character height around here. So two. So if you're gonna fill in anything, you're gonna wanna fill in your bottom blocks first. So here and here, around your structures before um, placing in the, the remaining blocks. So you can just get here and then move on to the next part portion of that or place like this and move on to the next portion. You do not want to have to do this in a wall segment. If you want to move your mouse all the way down here, moving your down, down or your down, moving your mouse downward, um, waste the time of having to move it back up, recorrecting your position, and then moving it across. Um, another good way is to go straight down to the bottom and then back up. And this is okay, but it's a little slower. I'll show you one place where I had that particular issue. When I was building, or rebuilding, or modifying the structure in the PayPal club world, when I was doing these windows, I had a lot of three wide, six high gaps that I needed to fill around the structure and it was more efficient to play the, place the bottom two blocks and go around the structure filling in these by just you know, skipping every three blocks and then doing it that way. It's way more efficient. Another, th um, another building uh, challenge I had here was doing the flooring. Um, it was designed by Wars, awesome. Did a great job. Looks amazing, especially whenever it's daylight. You get a lot of reflection. It's like cotton candy um, flooring, and it's got like a what's the word there? Vaporwave. Yeah, vaporwave color scheme. It's really nice. Here's the sun, right? Sunrise. You want it to be a little higher, so you can get some good color reflections off of it. It is really nice looking. So one big... just looks so good. Um, one big um, problem that I had with placing blocks here is I had a grid pattern of blocks. As you can see with the transparent tur turquoise here. See, oh, there we go. There's the cotton candy. As the sun gets higher, it looks so much better. Look at that. 
got this optical illusion thing going on. It's, it's nice. Especially when you get up high. Very, very cool. We'll have these areas which on some corners you can do that. But on others you can't. You can't go from one to the other in that same direction. But you can go on the other side. So you see where there's a problem there. There's one one side is fine, but the other side doesn't do it in that direction. You have to go in the opposite direction. That's a limitation of the um, pathfinding algorithm for blocks in Trove, because it checks in three dimensions. So one of their pathfinding algorithms is biased towards one side because of an if then checks, some statement in there that checks one side. I think it's the, um, the north um, as priority, or I think it's actually the east. The east has priority over other sides. So it'll go in the eastern direction first. Another way you can see that is if you, I'll have to find it here. You're gonna have to give me a moment. So if you have a structure, I think it's this wide. I'm just eyeballing this. Where if you're, yeah, you're this far, you cannot place blocks over this way. But if you're facing towards the east side, you can. So that's valid. But if you're facing towards the west, it's not. But on the east side, it is. So there's some quarks with the pathfinding algorithm in Drove that has a bias towards the east side when you're facing the east side. Just keep that in mind. So you have a better reach if you're facing towards the east than you do if you're facing towards the west. Um, things that they didn't teach you at all in the Trove tutorial. Um, yeah. Kind of, kind of a pain in the ass, really. Um, don't forget that there are other metallic blocks. They're basically free. So this metallic block here on the ground, it's actually, oh, Imperium. It's actually, you know, there you go. It's um, foundation blocks from the from the cornerstone. That's what I was trying to get at. Uh, I was caught off guard by the brand page alert. I really want to do that, but I want to also film this video. So, yeah. Um, trying to think if there's any other things I need to cover. Yeah, palette management. So, if you're doing a large build like this, you're going to want to use a palette that's not offensive. Um, well, something I would just uh, something I would call an offensive palette would be light gray. Light gray is offensive because you are telling people that you would rather build with your the cheapest option that you can, right? Like if you go here in the light gray. So light gray uses one prime one prime with gray. A white uses three primal gray. So white gr white is more expensive than light gray. And if you're trying to use or make a white structure and you place gray blocks, it not, may not make a difference to you, but it makes a difference to people who are building structures who can see the color difference or have a very good color sensitivity. Using pure white um, has a um, a sheen to it um, in-game. Um, it's very metallic-like, 
and it just looks better um, than the light gray block and I can tell. Um, when you're pairing it with other blocks it dulls out their their color so here we have a lot of high contrast colors on the floor and if you have you're using a light gray well, we're going to craft some light gray real quick I don't have any light gray because I only use white but if you're going to go the budget route for light gray blocks and you shouldn't have to because light gray is almost white but isn't really white like here it doesn't make a difference really it just doesn't have the like metallic sheen that white does on the, on the back end and when it's grouped together you can really kind of see the lack of the specular lighting on the light gray and if you get real close and put it around a bunch of white blocks you can tell that it's darker not significantly but that it is so you can see that it's got a little like it's like a matte kind of um, clay right color to it but the white has a specular kind of light that the gray sort of dolls out. It just doesn't look as nice. Especially on corners. Corners are, well, are just matte. Like here you have this like ridge that goes all the way through. But on the gray blocks you have it just dulls it out. It might be partly that it's too close to the tree, but it's really hard to describe. It's like it just goes straight to black, basically. But on the edges for white blocks, it has a like a white specular highlight, which is it just looks nicer in corners. So whenever you're turning around corners, you see that the white block has a like um, ghosting image, especially when it ghosts as you're passing by, and that's a and that's a limitation of the, the rendering engine. But it does look nicer. Um, another offensive set of colors I see are use of like dark gray instead of charcoal, or for just not using as many boxes as necessary. Like um, on floors, they should you should leave provisions to make them at least three th three thick, um, or or two thick. One for the ceiling, one for the floor. If you're going to cover it both completely, here I've made prov provisions for it to be uh, as thick as three blocks, so that you can have a different pattern for the ceiling and the floor of each level of those of this building. And um, in trove, and it goes the same for Minecraft as well. Every block is about a meter meter high, so. Your flooring, whenever the ceiling and floor are placed there to color, uh, should have a gap no larger than four blocks, because that's twelve feet. I don't. Tell, you tell me that has a of about an office building has a ceiling clearance higher than twelve feet. Um, there's none. Be lucky if you find anything higher than nine. So if you want a realistic building size, you're going to want four block height, um, six block height if you want flooring that looks nice. Um, this is a little too high. It's exceeding a little, a little tad bit. This entire building could be about four blocks lower and be perfectly fine. But I wanted provision for a larger building size. Basically, to make the lobby feel more like a lobby and less like a um, an office space. But here, always check to see if you've messed 
blocks. I did a thorough check, and I do mean thorough. I went over five times um, to see if I was missing any blocks in the structure at all. I can guarantee you that place there did not have a block missing. So I must have done that while flying around here. Oh yeah. You can't place anything directly into the hotbar. It's kind of irritating. But what I want you to gather from this guide, summary of it, is that in order to place blocks, again, place upward and fall. Falling is better. If you're going to place around a ring or doing flooring like this, rather than going back and forth like this, I'm just go around the whole ring and then work your way in. It feels The work feels a lot faster that way. It doesn't feel slow. It doesn't actually make it any faster. It is the same speed, but it'll make you feel like you're making progress sooner than just building across a... Like if I build across this thing and then you finally finish it and you're like, oh yeah, I'm only a third of the way done. Um, it doesn't feel less. It feels the same if you're building um, concentric rings towards the center um, where you can't see how much progress you've made and relative, so you can look at it and be like, oh man, I'm almost, I'm almost in the middle. Just a little more to go. Um, uh, it just keeps your morale up while you're trying to do huge infills like this. Um, yeah, keep in mind of your orientation whenever you're building. Um, build to the east if, if and when you can, just because you have a longer reach that way. Um, if you want a shorter reach, face towards the rest. Um, if you can do that. So if you're doing a um, you're destroying something, but you don't want to destroy something that far away. Face face towards the, the west. So you see there that I can't right there is about my, my limit. Facing towards the east, man. Get a little bit longer range, and you don't want that all the time. So just remember that's an option. Oh, I forgot. Yeah. Okay, um, one important part of this guide um, that I completely glossed over is that whenever you're filling in um, something and you destroy uh, blocks like this, and you're like, "Oh darn, I I missed um, I missed some of my blocks, and um, I need to repair this." Do not use primal green, please. <laughs> uh, don't do that. You can craft the dirt blocks individually, but it's much easier to craft mimic blocks and then place them. And of course my building is bugged. Oh, it's gonna bother me. Can I please place this? Oh no. Can I place it? Come on. I'm gonna have to switch club worlds. Jeez. I'm gonna have to switch club worlds to get rid of that bug. Sometimes that happens. It prevents you from placing a particular block, particular block in your inventory. You have to switch club worlds just to finish this tutorial. That's a pain. But you have mimic blocks. What they do is that they copy blocks that they're next to. There you go, perfect repair. Um, one thing to keep in mind with mimic blocks is they they will choose a random block nearby to mimic. So whenever you place the mimic blocks. There's a chance it'll take either this side or that side um, if you're doing that and have a large infill that you need repaired. What you're going to want to do is that you're going to want to um, repair the stuff you know and will mimic correctly first. And when you get to, the, to an edge, fill in the place where the, you want the mimic blocks to be. Go back and destroy it, fill it with the mimic block again. And sometimes you'll have to do this multiple times in order to get the correct mimic block. And of course I ran out of mimic blocks, that's amazing. I have some cornerstone foundation at least. I will have to go craft some mimic blocks. But yeah, you can go back and destroy the old mimic block and then replace it and basically gamble again as whether or, whether or not it's replaced correctly. So just keep that in mind. Uh, I think I th 
there may be a bias in the random number generator to the east side as well. So um, we'll try that real quick. It's under special blocks. I'm going to want a lot of them. And they cost one form a site each. It can get pretty expensive. But it's worth your club world looking nice and correct whenever you're flattening area out like this with your bulldozer. Just let the grass grow back on its own. It takes forever, but you can AFK here. Um, anything else? Any other? things I needed to cover. No, if I think of anything, I'll make a second guide for you. But that should cover pretty much everything you need to know about building in Trove, at least for for beginner stuff. I hope you liked the video, and we'll come back to you shortly with new Trove content. This has been Soaring Moon. Okay, thanks, bye.